If you've never walked in a stadium of this magnitude before, it is a sight to behold for the very first time that you walk in. You walk in and you've never seen this many people in one spot at one time. You're going to be marveled by what you see in this stadium. You, to see 111,000 fans, that's incredible. To see that many people in one place, that's going to that's gonna freak anybody out. When you can get over 100,000 people in one location, it's, it's a spectacle. And that's what this is every weekend. It's a wonderful stadium to play. I don't know where their opponents like to come in here or not. I could tell when I had a good play because of the sound I'd get in the background from the fans. You'd hear that roar come up from the fans, almost a roar of approval. Uh, you, you, you take a look at it, the lines are very clean. And this is something because it's part of a community, part of a neighborhood, that makes it, I think, that much more neat. That's all I can call it. Located 45 miles west of Detroit is Ann Arbor, Michigan, home to the University of Michigan. I always loved the way that the university and the town are actually intertwined. It's really hard to tell where the university starts and the, and the town ends. This is a place where when you talk about Michigan football, you know it's Ann Arbor, and when you talk about Ann Arbor, you know it's Michigan football. Big win today. Well, I think the, the community loves it, number one, from a business aspect, because when you're bringing in 100,000 people, uh, you're literally bringing in a city that's uh, one of the top 200 cities in the country of that size every Saturday. Ann Arbor and the University of Michigan, they're just synonymous. In my mind, they've always just been one and the same. To some, the University of Michigan is known as the Harvard of the Midwest. But Michigan is not only known for its excellence in academics. The Wolverines also boast one of the top college sports programs in the country, winning Big Ten and national championships on a yearly basis. But it's football that drives the bus in Ann Arbor. And on a fall Saturday, the big house, Michigan Stadium, is rocking with over 110,000 maize and blue clad fans. It's as impressive a scene as there is in college football, maybe in any sport. Since 1883, Michigan has won more games than any other Division 1A team outside of Notre Dame. They're always in a battle one and two and has the best winning percentage of any Division 1 football program. So when you take a look at it, the Wolverines are a fighting bunch. What's special about Michigan is the history, the success, uh, the people most of all though, the integrity of the program. You have the rich tradition of the national championships, three Heisman Trophy winners, and it's carried on from generation to generation of players and coaches and administrators. Here we go, baby. Here we go. What I've felt since the moment I became the head coach here is a responsibility to do things that are going to make the people here at Michigan proud of this program, to do things the right way, Aggressive 21. to do things with integrity and with the best interest of uh, the kids that we're coaching. One, two, three, Michigan! They embody the sport. Everybody likes football. In this house, in this setting, uh, it's second to none. Well, the character of a Michigan football team is always, the first word I have to use is toughness, and I think it was instilled by my coach, Bo Schembechler. You always have tough defenses. They're always going to run the football, and they're always in every game. So Michigan always competes very well. The term big house means Michigan Stadium. When you're talking college football and someone says the big house, they're thinking Ann Arbor, Michigan, and they're thinking Michigan Stadium. 107,501. It's crazy on here on Saturdays. You have that many people in here in the stadium. It's, it's home for me. The big house is amazing. It's so huge for one thing, and it's so great to look out, you know, at a game. Fans go forever, you know. It's not tall, but they just go out forever. And just seeing so many people, they're all close together. Until you've gone in there and you're in there with 112,000 people all screaming and yelling and hollering at the same time. It's just an awesome feeling that nobody can describe. There's nothing like it. I mean, if you want to watch a football game, the excitement, the uh, crowd, the noise, the, the level of uh, support for the team, there's nothing like it in the Big Ten, in fact, across the country. The term big house may mean a lot of things, but when you're talking college football, it's Ann Arbor, Michigan. 
Really, the person who coined the word big house was Keith Jackson, the ABC television commentator who called it uh, the big house in the 1990s. And that's how it kind of got started. And because it is the biggest house, we've been using the terminology big house for the last 15, 20 years. It's interesting from a player's standpoint because it never struck me as being intimidating. It's almost like your focus is so much on the field and your opponent that I really didn't think about the size of the stadium. But I know when we would go play elsewhere, they talk about the Rose Bowl in California. Really no big deal to us because we play here all of our home games. And when we go to other stadiums where they might have 60,000, 70,000, 80,000 fans, really didn't affect us at all because our home has over 100,000. When Fielding H. Joe's tried to build this stadium, they thought he was nuts. They didn't want to give him the okay to do this. He has a civil engineering degree besides being a great football coach and had tremendous vision. So he built this stadium. He convinced the regents of the University of Michigan that we should build a stadium of this size, despite the fact that the largest population was in Detroit, which was still 30 miles away. At that time, that's a long way to travel, and yet the fans came. I don't want to sound blasphemous, but it's like Mecca. People want to come to this stadium. Since the inaugural season in 1927, Michigan Stadium has seen over 35 million fans pass through its gates. One of the greatest traditions of Michigan Stadium is the extra seat that is always added to the capacity number given to Michigan Stadium every year. The extra seat was added in 1956 and its location will always be a mystery is because Fritz Chrysler wanted to do kind of a publicity bit and he always said that he was going to hold one seat for fielding HO so that only he knew where it was going to be and that's why you have the 01 so when you had 100,000 001 Fritz Chrysler decided that to make sure that one seat was there now we have 107 501 as the capacity of the stadium and we still don't know where fielding HO seat is The University of Michigan Wolverine nickname has been around since 1861. The practice of bringing real Wolverines to the game ended in 1937. A Wolverine is the fiercest animal of its size in the world. It is one nasty hombre. And that's the way you'd like to have your football team play. It's not the biggest animal in the world, but pound for pound, we always thought that it was the ultimate fighting machine. It'll take on anything, and it, it'll try to defeat anything till its death. And when you get a Wolverine angry, it's not a very pleasant animal to be around. We will not teddy bearize the Wolverine. The Wolverine is a fierce, proud animal and does not uh, deserve to be made into a plush toy. You know, we're fighters, we're ferocious fighters to the end. No matter what the outcome of the game, and no matter what's going on throughout the course of the game, you can always count on one thing, and that's that we're going to bring everything we have to the forefront. At least it's a nickname that, um, that is politically correct. <laughs> Brother Wolverine. <laughs> The greatest tradition in Michigan football is the winged helmet. And when you see the University of Michigan Wolverine football helmet, you know it's the Michigan Wolverines. In the old leather helmets, if you recall, they stitched uh, rows of them here and stitched that helmet together. And Fritz Chrysler painted the stitching and stuff maze. We don't call it yellow, it's maize, and uh, made the helmet maize and blue. It's a very unique helmet. He did it for one reason, so that the passer could see the receiver downfield because the helmet was so uh, distinctive. And now it's tradition. It's part, of the, it's part of the lore of Michigan. That helmet is the most recognized. You pull that helmet out and everybody knows it's University of Michigan. By God, that is a Michigan football helmet, and it's ours uh, exclusively. You see that helmet, and you know that it's Michigan football. And I just think that uh, it's a source of pride to every guy who ever put one on. From the standpoint of uh, the quarterback, uh, certainly you know where your targets are. Now you just got to hit them.
When that band takes the field here playing the victors, uh, there's electricity in the air. John Philip Sousa said it was the greatest fight song ever written. And uh, I think it is. It's more than just a fight song. When you sing the song, it's something you feel. You know, it moves throughout your body. And when you're finished singing the song, you truly believe that you are, in fact, the victors and the champions of the West. Say one, two, you know what to do. Hail to the victors, valiant. Hail to the conquering heroes. Hail, hail to Michigan, the leaders and best. Hail to the victors, valiant. Hail to the conquering heroes. Hail, hail to Michigan, the champions of the West. Go Blue! And that's why we became one of the first teams west of the Alleghenies to be one of the strong football programs in college sports. And there's times I look across when the band's playing, I look out into the stadium, and you know, it, it really does bring a tear to my eye sometimes because it's so powerful, it means so much to so many people for so many years. There's nothing better. Marching Man has right now about 405 people in it, which is up from two or three years ago, which is about 300. So we've grown the program over the last few years. We're really excited about that. The band is a very huge part of the tradition and the game day experience at Michigan, especially in the big house. It would be a strange thing to have a football game and not hear the victors, not hear Let's Go Blue, not hear the band play and the, the crowd going crazy with the fist pumping and all that. Um, so I think we're a, an integral part of that. It is very physically demanding because the different types of stuff we do for pregame are very physically demanding. Like just holding your legs up and going so fast and just everything we do is like running a couple miles. We can increase the energy in the stadium at times if it's kind of dead. And we certainly join along when there's a great play. It just adds to the excitement level on a game day. Tailgating at a Wolverine football game is not your average tailgate. Actually, there are two of them. One for the football team, the other for the University of Michigan band. The kids, they get out here, they're out here at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and they practice for up two hours, and then they have an hour to get from the practice field, get rid of their instruments, get something to eat, get in the uniform, be ready for inspections. Yeah. They really enjoy just walking across the street, sitting down and having somewhat of a home-cooked meal instead of dollar dogs on the corner. A couple of the parents usually throw a tailgate for us. Like, this is, this is the trumpet section right here. It's really nice to come here every weekend, you know. Good food. We need it before the game. And I feed uh, pretty much most of the piccolo section of the University of Michigan Marching Band. When it gets cold, she brings us homemade soup. Like, this is homemade chicken noodle, like homemade noodles. It's amazing. And there's a bunch of desserts and chips and just a whole bunch of food. It's great. Best feeling is when they walk up to you and say, thank you very much, this was really great for you to do this. Um, that's kind of a good feeling. They're just like killed turkey. Oh, it feels wonderful. They're, first of all, they're cold and hungry, and they're very, very appreciative of anything that we do. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome, you know, like, all this support, come watch them in the stands, but the food is key, and this is the last home game, so we're trying to show our appreciation and everything. So it's a lot of fun. Inside the big house at the University of Michigan, fans are treated to one of the most unique intros in college football. Just moments before game time, the Michigan band and football team take the field in an explosive fashion. The band rushes out of the tunnel at a really fast pace, a really high entry step that's unique to Michigan, and it really creates some excitement at the beginning of the game and play, you know, the greatest fight song in the country, and uh, I think that's a very unique thing. When we come out of the tunnel and you see 110,000 people and you know they're all watching you, it's amazing and you just like, you can't even stop and think about the pain or anything, like the adrenaline just runs through you and you just go. And coming down that long tunnel, 
You see that long opening at the end of the tunnel, and the team is coming down like a herd of cattle. We're grouped together. Everybody's in one big bunch, and we're going to the tunnel. We know it's now. It's a Saturday afternoon in the fall in Ann Arbor. It's time to go to work. When we run out of that tunnel, we know it's game time, and when we touch the banner, that's when the kind of the flip switch on in our head, and we know that it's time to play. It's time to do battle. Now it's all business, and that's the attitude that we have when we touch the banner. Uh, I don't touch that banner because I can't jump that high, but uh, <laughs> you know, I always tell the players, there's only one tunnel, there's only one way in here, there's no trap doors, there's only one way out of there, and when you go into this uh, stadium, you want to play as hard as you can, you want to run faster than you've ever run, and you want to play better than you've ever played. So uh, the opportunity to play here and represent this great university, this great tradition, the winningest tradition in college football is something that uh, I think every guy who comes here takes uh, great pride in. When you finally are pulling that blue jersey on over your shoulder pads and, and you're holding that helmet in your hand and, and you're walking down that tunnel and you put it on and you do your chin strap and you think, my life is never going to be the same after I run out that tunnel. And by God, you're right, it never is going to be the same. What each guy brings to this stadium when he comes out of that tunnel, he wants to leave a legacy, both as a team and individually. And yet, you know when you leave here, you're going to have played on some championship football teams, and uh, you're going to be, become part of that great tradition. I suppose the one thing that I started here in 1969, we came up with a saying that those who stay will be champions. A tradition at many college football programs is the Senior Day celebration at the final home game of the season. It's a special time for the senior student athletes and their families to be honored for their commitment to the university and the football team. Senior Day is a great opportunity for every senior to come here and get a chance to be recognized. There's a sign in Schembechler Hall that says, those that stay will be champions. And that's a great tribute to all the people who came here as freshmen and stuck it out here for sometimes five years to get honored and recognized by the whole state with them and their families. Watching my son out there play is a joy like no other. I wish every parent had an opportunity to experience it. I was very proud of myself and my accomplishments being able to come here and play at the University of Michigan. There is no feeling watching your child come here and do the same thing that you did before. It's been told to me, Stan, remember, you're in very rare company to play at Michigan and have a son to play at Michigan as well. So we really honor, we humbly are very proud to have that happen, but we know how very special that is and we cherish it every moment. Michigan football. We're live from the big house under sunny skies today as Michigan wraps up the home portion of its schedule against the Wildcats of Northwestern. You put your jersey on, you like, yes, I, you know, I'm a Wolverine, but it never really dawns on you until you hit the field and field action. I have 100,000 people here to see me play to see Michigan play. Now you're in it. You're in the mix of it. And you have a pivotal role in something that you've watched for years and years. And you have a part in it. And to go out and to win a game and be a part of something like that, it, it's, it's incredible. If we wanted to compete uh, week in and week out, we had to be mentally prepared. We had to be physically prepared. And to me, that's the mark of a football team at Michigan is, is one that's mentally and physically prepared uh, to go out and battle. And as long as you're battling and you're prepared, uh, you might not win them all, but uh, you know, you live true to your, your school colors and you live true to yourself because you've given everything you could. When I came here, freshmen weren't eligible to play. And I can remember coming up here at night when I was a freshman and sitting up in those stands all by myself and it might be nine or 10 o'clock at night and I would just dream about what it would be like to run out that tunnel and to run out onto this field. Maybe that's what made me appreciate it so much, is that I spent that entire freshman year wondering what it would be like to actually take the field as a Michigan Wolverine. And it turned out to be everything I dreamed it would be. And when you come in here and you see 107 
501 standing in this crowd going nuts and you'll be in awe. You won't be able to speak, you won't be able to sleep, you won't be able to, you'll be talking about it for the next two, three weeks. Bo always started a speech off that we owe it to every Michigan woman, man, and child to go out there and play as hard as we can for Michigan. It's interesting to be back here on the field today because I walked over in the right corner of the end zone. That's where I scored my first touchdown. And so those memories came back, the feel of the crowd, the sound. And I just wanted to, you know, see if I can get that feel back. And it all came back to me as I walked over. I'm not running now, but as I walked over to the corner to, to relive that feeling. And they have a sign, they have a saying here that say, those who stay will be champions. Well, guess what? Everybody wants to come here so they can be a champion. And then those guys who don't get a chance to come here, this was their first choice. This is where they wanted to be. And, and I was lucky and deemed lucky enough to have the privilege to play here. When I leave here, I think the thing that'll stick out in my mind most, the friendships I made here and, and the people I've met, you know, coaches and players included. I'll take these guys with me for life. Michigan football is about uh, working hard and working together with a group of people. I would hope that they feel like whatever they go into, they'll play a leadership role because they understand what leadership is all about. When you're a player, you find out that you can really do some things that you didn't think you could do. When you're thinking that you can give your all, the coach tells you to dig down deep and give a little more, you do. That's what you find out about yourself here at Michigan. Uh, the big house is a special place because it is rocking. You know, this is the largest stadium in the country, uh, 107, 501. You know, when you get out here and you make a play or you're in the middle of the field or you look up, you know, and you take a second for the game and you just look around and you see 100,000 people just cheering for you and cheering for your team, it's, it's something special about it. So when people ask me what place does football have at the University of Michigan, a very prominent place. It's not more important than the academics, but it's damn sure important here at Michigan. Let's go, Blue. This is the big house, and it's only getting bigger. And for as long as Michigan football is around Ann Arbor, the 110 plus thousand are going to pack this place to cheer for the Michigan Wolverines, the champions of the West. For Fields of Glory, I'm Brian Musburger. Yeah.